As we do know, the Houston Rockets got obliterated by 41 points, but what I want to focus on is J.R. Jackson. Well, focus on me. I like that. Let's do it. Comma. A guy named James Harden who cannot play a lick of defense. And I want to revisit this again because we were starting to think, hey, dude's turned a corner. Who was thinking that? <laughs> oh, everybody in this MVP season. Yeah. That's all that we heard about James Harden. First off, the plus minus for the Houston Rockets, this is how bad they were. Nobody was a positive rating. Hmm. Everyone was a minus. So James Harden yesterday, 7 to 16, uh, okay from the field, 20 points, 9 assists. Like, that's decent, whatever. He got shook by Sean Livingston, yep. which just capped everything off in the third quarter. And when this run, uh, fourth quarter, uh, the run was pretty much finished. But just the way that he got demolished by Sean Livingston. By the way, you think he practiced this one from time and time again? <laughs> so he kills James Harden. You know what? Cool. I'll give up one, right? Mm -hmm. like, he, like with a great offensive player, you're gonna get you're gonna get beat. Yes. Sometimes. Yes, and it's totally normal. So it's like, all right, cool. I'll give him one. Here's what I did not like yesterday. In the second quarter is when it all fell apart, in my opinion. And obviously the third quarter was Steph's output. But James Harden's defense was just atrocious. Look at his feet. Kevin Durant is already setting himself up, right? Already setting himself up. And then what happens? He beats James Harden, who's flat-footed. Next, uh, next slide is Steph Curry. You probably remember this. He is trapped in the corner. There is nowhere to go. Sideline is your friend at this moment. And what does James Harden do in this case? He lets his foot off the gas, and Steph Curry gets an easy two as he goes to the basket. There was another one here that I wanted to showcase in the third quarter when they were going on the run, 15-point game. This is simply James Harden not realizing that he has no help and allowing a backdoor cut by Stephen Curry. Again, very flat-footed. Look at where James Harden is and look at where Steph Curry is. This is pretty much the game here. Steph Curry then taking him off the dribble one more time. Now, I don't know if like James is thinking that help is going to be there. Maybe you could take me through this. Mm -hmm. But then he gets beat once again. They were spreading out the floor. Again. And Steph Curry is going to get another easy well, two. That's what we're looking at. So this happens with a lot of uh, NBA players, actually. Especially when you're that far out from the basket where it started. You start reaching. Even when the defense is good. I was like, I watch it all the time. I'm like, okay. You have this guy, you're turning him, mm -hmm. your feet are in the right place, and then this starts happening. Yeah. Why are you reaching? It's the, it's the one We've thing established this with James Harden's offense as well. It's one thing that stuck with me since, like, for high school. I had a, my high school coach was not good. <laughs> um, but the one thing that, that stuck is stop reaching. Yeah. There's two words, stop reaching. What are you reaching for? What are you reaching for? The only need, reason you need to reach is if this guy is putting the ball in front of you. And now you can take it. Yeah. But if they're if they're dribbling, if they're crossing up, what are you reaching for? Play defense. So he get he, you get beat when you reach because then you're off balance. You're putting yourself forward. So there's nowhere else to go except for around your ass. Right. So uh, it's it's that it's lazy defense. It has nothing to do with not being able to play defense. It has nothing to do with oh man, so he's effort. tired. Yeah. It's and then when you're down by 13, which a few of those slides you were, all you're thinking about is again, and I talked about this in the first clip, is you have to. Uh, try and catch up constantly. Oh, Steph just made a three. Oh, I gotta make a three. Mm -hmm. Then now you're down six. Mm -hmm. Then nine. So it, it, it's it, you're going down this this, this tunnel of loser. <laughs> and you're this on, tunnel on, of loser. On, on defense, you're not thinking. Loser. You're not thinking. I need to stop these guys. You're thinking I need to score on these guys. What I think it is. While you're on defense, you're thinking about offense. There's a perfect comparison. When a catcher is having a bad offensive game, or rather a bad defensive game, sometimes it translates to their bat. Mm -hmm. What I saw from James Harden is when he's not getting the calls. I was looking this up. He usually goes to the line this past season over 10 times a game. In the past two games, 11 times total. What I think it is is frustration offensively yeah. translating into defensively and showing a lack of effort. And he has a proven history of not performing when they get blown out in one game. So I'm going to be curious to see what happens in game four.